Dog Works Radio is sponsored by Alaska Dog Works. Check out their website at alaskadogworks.com. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by First Paw Coffee Company, specializing in private label premium blend coffee. If you're serious about coffee, you should check it out. First Paw Coffee's passion is high quality, small batch roasted coffee. They take the extra time to taste and get everything perfect before they release new blends. They aim to bring you a cup of happiness each time you pour yourself some coffee. Find out more at ak.dog slash free and enter for a chance to win some First Paw Coffee prizes, a book from our collection and tote bag. One winner will be selected at random each month. That's ak.dog slash free. From First Paw Media, sponsored by First Paw Coffee Company, this is the Dog Driver Show. Visit our website at dogworksradio.com. Now here are your hosts, Robert Forto and Kurosh Parto. Hello and welcome everybody. This is Robert Forto and I am here with my co-host KP and you're listening to the Dog Driver Show. KP, how's it going today? And yes, Robert, uh, today we have uh, two of my friends actually. I know both of them for a long time and uh, uh, and uh, they are calling us from uh, saint Sauveur, uh, Quebec. Uh, and both of them, they've been in the sled dog circuit for a long time. Actually, I believe uh, uh, they started one year after I started in Europe. Uh, uh, the combination of their team, uh, husband and wife, they've won many, many uh, races and championship. Uh, here we are uh, today uh, with Martin and Cathy Dejeuner de saint Sauveur. How are you guys doing today, guys? Pretty good. Thank you. Doing great. Thanks yeah. for having us. Um, Thank you for having us. We love your show. Uh, it's we, amazing what you're doing for uh, the sled dog sport. Um, uh, Martin, uh, uh, and Kathy, uh, both of you guys, you probably know, we have a lot of, lot of listeners. We have around 10,000 listeners right now uh, listening to uh, these interviews. Uh, some of them are not very familiar with the sled dog sport. They're just passionate about the uh, racing and sled dogs. Why don't you give us a uh, little bit of background about yourself, Martin, and Kathy for yourself at the same time? Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, I'll start just because I, I started actually way earlier than than Katzi did because uh, when I was about uh, 12 years old I started training uh, my uh, own my uh, house dog which was a Labrador retriever <laughs> and uh, for what I don't know for what reason but I always wanted to have a dog pull me on a sled <laughs> so uh, I started uh, training that dog and for one uh, Christmas um, gift, my parents bought me uh, a real sled, a wooden sled. So I uh, started race, uh, not racing, but training my dog and having fun with him. And so uh, about a few years uh, later, I went to a dog race, to see a dog race with my father in 1987. Uh, and we met... Uh, a really nice guy named Harry Sefton, and this man uh, became a mentor to me when I was uh, 15 years old, 14, 15 years old, and uh, showed me uh, the ropes and gave me the the passion for uh, starting to race and and, uh, get involved in the sport. That's how it it started. How about you, uh, Kathy? Oh, I was... uh... I was introduced through my husband's passion. Um, at first, I was just helping him out with uh, the care of the dogs and the training. And then uh, when he, and my first year was uh, in 2008 with the four dogs, which <laughs> I thought was pretty hard still. And uh, after that, uh, my husband got a back injury uh, and he had set up a super good team for the first time world championship in Quebec. So to support him, I got on his team and started training his team with his help. And uh, that's how I got, uh, um, how can I say, uh, the passion of uh, racing. 
and I've been doing it since then. And uh, so it's just uh, I started getting hands on uh, since that moment. Uh, uh I know you uh, for at least fifteen years or so. How hard is it? Uh, uh, because of your back injury and your physical, you know, uh, challenge that you have, to have this such a strong, hot team and not race it yourself. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, well. The fact that Katsi take o- took over uh, made it much, much easier. But um, I had to, uh, you know, to make uh, peace with it because it it also me- means that I can't. Uh, I was a pretty good uh, golf player and tennis player, and I can't do that uh, either. So, uh, but the dog racing, uh, <clears throat> it, it's it's tough. But I'm I, I'm I'm training a lot of the dogs in the in the fall on the on the ATV. So I do see them run, <laughs> but it's I never have the feeling of the the super high speeds or the um, the thrill of of their races. <clears throat> but uh, I, I'm, I'm used to it now. It's been uh, 11 or 12 years. So, and uh, Katia has been so, um, you know, she's been doing great and she's been, uh, uh, we, we, we've traveled the world uh, and experienced things that have been uh, uh, really positive. So I'm trying to have a positive uh, view of, of everything that happened. And, uh, but it's, uh, it sure it sure would have been nice to, <laughs> to step on some of those, the, Team to to see them run at full uh, at full speed, yeah, it would have been nice. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you mentioned uh, uh, mentioned to me uh, that you restarted your kennel in two thousand and three, uh, and with some new blood and new lines. What is the background yeah. behind your dog team that you have currently? What are the lines and genetics behind them? Yeah, well, we we've been lucky throughout the years to uh, to uh, create uh, or to. I mean, um, make friends with some great mushers, and they've helped us a lot uh, along the way. So, um, at first, the first dog that I the, the the first dog that I got when we got back into the sport was a pup named Kobe from Ego Ellis and Ellen Lundberg. <clears throat> so that dog turned out to be a leader, uh, Isra Gold Medal leader. And he came from uh, the the K litter that Ego raced with and won everything with. So that dog was exceptional. And then after that, we bought a dog from Norway, from Brigida Nass. And she uh, she was a foundation dog for our breeding. Kobe turned out to be uh, uh, he was not fertile, fertile, so we couldn't breed him. But uh, yeah, so the base of our genetics was uh, Manly from uh, Norway that we bred to a dog named Rummy that was a Mike's son that we got from Eric and Stacy Lancer. Mm-hmm. So those are the, the, the first breeding that we did were Rummy and Manly. So now the, 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 the bloodlines we have are uh, a lot of, uh, I mean, it, it would take hours to, to explain, like I'm sure like it is with your kennel, but we have had great dogs from the Streepers, uh, great dogs from the Ruperts. They've helped us a lot along the way, the Ruperts and the Streepers. And so our bloodlines are mainly Ego Ellis, uh, Streepers, uh, Ruperts, and uh, the uh, 14, 15 years ago from Brigida Nass also. Um, so that. Kathy, um, you said you started uh, getting on runners around 2008 and uh, and with this powerful, strong team that Martin had, uh, was it uh, challenging or scary uh, oh, to get on? Oh, very. <laughs> I, I had just a hard time staying on the sled with four dogs. So it took all my courage to go on his team and, and race. Um, but just maybe the fact that I had to, to train by myself, I just uh, learned really quickly. And uh, and just the dogs were amazing. Also, uh, the 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 um, just working with them and getting to know them very uh, well. And uh, we, I, I was just part of a team with the dogs, and it gave me a lot of uh, confidence. 
out there. Um, but sure, it was very nerve-wracking <laughs> at first. <laughs> I can imagine it, it, it's a, such a strength. Yeah. It's always impressive seeing uh, you guys run uh, with your strength. Uh, and uh, Robert, for our listeners who are not familiar with uh, Martin and Kathy, these guys, they travel all around the world. They are the pros of the pros. They uh, put a uh, short circuit, usually a few races uh, that they target a year, and they go and they put the hammer down. And uh, um, usually they do very, very well. Um, you guys, you went to the World Championship last year to Besson. You flew all the way to France. Um, how was that uh, travel, and how was the experience? Well, the the traveling is always a big challenge. It's well, we we love challenges. That's why we 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 search the best race and where there is the most competition. But traveling adds another aspect. Um, to uh, to look at um, because the dogs with the plane traveling they get jet lagged they get dehydrated so we have to be very very careful to keep them very healthy and um, and we, it's it's a big planning and all the nutritional aspect is very important and uh, it, uh, one we, and also once we get there, the conditions are very different than here. It's mostly warmer and in high altitude, which is a big disadvantage. So the dogs have to be really, really healthy and well trained. So earlier you learned about First Paw Coffee Company, and now I'm going to tell you about its Tail Wagger Blend. First Paw Coffee Company's Tail Wagger Blend is their first offering, and its name and label were crowdsourced from their Facebook fans. How cool is that? The Tail Wagger Blend is a private label premium blend that was developed just for them. It is a medium roast from Colombian beans with tastes of Brazil nuts, grapefruit, and oak. Be sure to go to ak.dog slash free and enter to win a bunch of cool prizes. That's ak.dog slash free. Let's talk about uh, bringing your team to Alaska because I've seen you guys driving and I believe yeah, I've seen you guys bringing uh, flying with your dogs. And we did the same. We used to travel uh, usually flying our dogs uh, when we lived in the lower uh, to come up. Um, how do you organize this trip? Uh, for our listeners that are not familiar with what it takes to take a dog team from one country to another country. Um, first of all, we we bring all the food, so they don't have a um, a different diet when we get there. So there there's no big change there for them. Um, we also boost their immunity a lot. So good uh, probiotics. Uh, good supplements it's, it's very important we have the vet checking them uh, every um, very often during the race season uh, so they're they're prepared and also a trick that we just uh, figure out not too long ago is uh, buying bottled water <laughs> so just before the race we we buy a lot of water in bottles so they don't drink tap water, and it helps, actually, because the, the years before, they were <laughs> getting, at some point, some uh, um, digestive problems and getting weak, weaker. Uh, but um, the, planning, the planning of the trip is mostly um, making sure we have everything for the dogs, the food and, and the supplements uh, ready for them. It, it's a big, uh, we, we bring a lot of stuff. <laughs> we don't have much suitcase for us. It's all about the dogs. Guys, we're sorry that the rest of the interview was cut short. Uh, we had some technical difficulties, but we hope to have these guys back on again real soon. And until then, we'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. This episode of the podcast is sponsored by First Paw Coffee Company. Learn more at firstpaw.coffee. From First Paw Media, this is The Dog Driver Show. We hope you enjoyed this podcast, and we invite you to subscribe in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. You'll find a link on the episode notes. You can tap or swipe on the episode cover art, and you can see some offers from our sponsors. You can support our show by supporting them. If you like what you have heard, we would love it if you could give us a five-star rating and tell your friends how to subscribe, too. 
Your hosts are Robert Forto and Kurosh Parto. Our producer is Robert Forto and created for First Paw Media.